All right, so now just like digital coloring, we started with a flat color and we filled up our black and now I'm adding some dimension. So I added a stroke and you can see it's all under effects on this layer. These things can be turned on and off and they can be adjusted. Now my stroke color here is just black. And actually black works pretty well because I still have a pretty solid black for my line art in my uh, spot illustration. And I might want to move my spot illustration on top of my type so that that color hold, that offset around the little entryway is kind of like an eyebrow for the, the fool's eye, right? But I can also, at any time, just select my type and control T, transform it. Because it's a smart object, it's not going to distort. Even if I stretch it, make it bigger, do different things with it, change my typesetting a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. And I'm doing that to both my black type layer and my color type layer. And I want to keep both. So when we turn in this assignment, assignment six, where we post it, the three requirements, though I made a big deal of the text blocking sketch and I definitely wanted you to do it. It's not actually one of the requirements you turn in because turning in four separate things seems like a lot. I want you to be able to turn in your clean black type, you know, at full resolution. I want you to turn in your color version of your type at resolution. And then I want you to be able to turn in your full poster. And this resolution is 16 by 20 at 350 pixels per inch. So you do not need to include these text blocking sketches, but I hope that you do them. I know most of you have. It makes your text better, more thoughtful when you take the time to refine it. So black type, I'm missing my color type. And this is color type, as simple as that is. And maybe that's all I need. There are plenty of good poster designs that just have a flat color with an outline. This one has a dimensional outline. You know, this is just flat color with a, a white dimensional outline. This is just flat color without any outline. But I can, I can play with a lot of these effects. It's just design and, and working with it. I want to show you how you can do what's called a double stroke. Because this is often very helpful. Because, for instance, I like the outline here. But when it's on black, I can't see that at all. Right? And when it's on white, it's kind of, it blurs into the blue. And actually, to be honest, I don't love how it's touching right there with the O's. There's a little space there, but I think I'm going to shrink it just a little bit. So all these effects you can just tinker with. Take it down to 23 pixels, it's a little bit better. Maybe take it down to 20. Now it's going to affect all the type the same. So. If I'm on gray as a background, let's do another offset around it that's a white outline. How can I do that? I can create a layer that is just a folder. I can create a folder layer, a group, and then I can put the type into that folder, just my color type. Just nest it right into that folder. There we go. And then I can actually double click and add effects to the folder as well as to my individual type. So here, instead of having to add an additional stroke in my layer styles, I can just do it to the folder. And I can choose a different color. So this time, instead of black, I'm going to use white. And I say OK. Now maybe instead of center, this time I try on the inside. And 
and then let me just shrink it a little bit. So inside, and now let's just make it like 15 pixels. Remember, this is on the folder, and that reveals a double stroke. Where I have black from the, the type layer effects, and then I have a white stroke from the, the group, the folder. Let's make that 10, split the difference. So what's the benefit of that? That double stroke, it helps it show up even better on like a black background, right? Where if I turn off the effects on the folder, it doesn't. Now, I also don't need, just like with my coloring, I don't need to stick with just flat color. I can add effects. like gradient overlay and to do that I'm going to take my color overlay and I'm going to take it to about 50 percent right. and now with my gradient overlay I can use the drop down I can create my own gradient let's see what are some of my options I can do it linear a really basic one that's often used these come from Photoshop from a, from a few um, versions ago, just this basic palette. You have kind of metal effects, you have rainbow effects, you have sunburst effects, but then this one's just really helpful and worth playing with. It's just warm to cool. And it goes violet to orange, but you can always change those colors. So, or I could use kind of this, this metallic bronzing. That looks pretty nice. And I can always change these colors. But if I just do warm to cool, then I can go to the gradient itself and I can edit it within layer styles. I like the purple. I don't love this orange, so let's change that color. Click on the color. Sometimes this can take a while because we're asking a lot of, of photo P here at high resolution but it's good to know your options. So let's see, let's change it to, yeah, something like that. And I'm gonna add a, a step in the gradient. Ah, <laughs> it keeps selecting the color, so it's kind of not keeping up with me. So I'll say okay. Hopefully it will register that instead of picking a different color. Patience. Getting my meditation breathing. Seeing if I can hit return instead of hit OK. There we go. OK, now I'm going to open it back up. And I can show you how you can add a color to a gradient. You just click on the gradient. And then you can change the color of what you've added. So maybe I put kind of a yellow in here. I don't want it to be greenish yellow though, so I'll move it a little bit closer to the oranges. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Oh, okay, here first. But I gotta wait until. There we go, it lights up. Got to be patient. The program will work for you. Remember, you're not paying anything for it, so you got to be patient. All right, so now I've got this gradient. It doesn't look like anything other than flat color, and that's because that gradient is extending from the very top of the pixels in that layer to the very bottom. So I can play with the scale. How much it spreads it out. Come on. And I can play with how complex it is to even it out. I can also play with the angle that it's at. And all of these things can really have an impact. 
I can play with its blending mode as well, which I think I will do. Instead of normal mode, let's take it to dissolve. And let's take its opacity down a little bit. So it gets some natural texture to it, like my illustration. And right now, underneath it is just the black type. So just black is coming through, which gives it kind of these little artifacts. Purple is pretty strong, so I can also just take the overall opacity of these effects down. But I don't want to affect the gray or the, the offset or the strokes. I just want to affect the gradient and the color overlay. So you have a lot of control here, just like you did when you were coloring your logos to mess with these. Now, I grew up during kind of 1980s cartoons, things like He-Man and Transformers and G.I. Joe and Silverhawks, and all of them had amazing title flags, right? And they would have like airbrushed glow effects and just everything. So sometimes you can get inspired in your type by trying to match something like that, but you don't want your type to be... to overpower your illustration. And you can always just do a duplicate, Command J, of your type layer, and then try different colors, and then play that opacity against what you have. So remember, just compositing skills, duplicating, modifying, adjusting. So if I did a, a darker blue here, maybe I'll layer that with something that's warmer on top. And brighter. That's too bright. <laughs> Something like that. Then maybe I take that opacity down. And I play up the gradient. And this time I'm going to use a different gradient that's more colorful, has more variation. I can reverse it. So the blue is at the bottom instead of at the top. And of course I can open up the gradient itself and adjust some of these because these are pretty hideous, but they can be helpful. I can move these. Should be able to. <laughs> so they take up different parts, different positions. There we go. Say OK. Come on. And you can see it's starting to color the gradient of the type, and then I'll blend that into some of my other layers. So just like we were playing with effects on our spot illustration, just like we were playing with coloring our logos, we can use all of those to color our type. And it's tricky teaching it, because I want to show you just every option under the sun but that is a limitation of Photo-P is that it can take a while to, to process these layer effects. So you just have fun with them until you find something that works. I want something in between those two. And remember, if you're having trouble with the sliders like I am, you can always type in values as well. There we go. And eventually we'll get there. Let's try 130. Yeah, that's looking better. Looks like a Grateful Dead poster. Try 125, 122. Yeah, and now I have a nice kind of gradation on, on both of them. 